All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create an object to help control scoring in the game. This object, we are going to make it separate from our hero. And the reason we're going to do that is because score health and lives are actually not really tied into any one given object. Mm -hmm. Score health and lives is tied into the game as a whole. Also, this object is going to exist in all of our rooms starting from the beginning all the way until the game is over. So this particular object, and we're going to call it controller main, is based on a tutorial from uh, Mark Overmars who created Game Maker. Yet I'm making my own little uh, switch. I'm going to put it as one object, controller main, and I'm going to make it persistent. And what's significant about being persistent is it will exist in every room from the first room to the end. This allows it to be able to always do a couple of functions that are necessary. The most important function to begin with is to initialize our game and that is the create event. Now the create event is only fired one time when an object appears in a room. Now, because this is persistent, it means it will exist in all the rooms. This create event will only happen in the very first room. And at the beginning of the game, we should set our main variables, score, health, and lives. Score should be zero. It is not relative because we want it to begin at zero. Next, lives. You get to determine how many lives does the player have. Typically, there are three lives. At least that's what I grew up with video games and arcades and stuff like that. But you can make changes on this. It depends on your game. Set lives. Okay, the last one is health. My recommendation is health should be as a percentage. So make it 100. And then that health goes down as you collide with other objects. Now, in this create event, all of these, none of these should be relative. Okay. Because we begin with zero points, three lives, and full health, which is 100. So this all goes under score. And then we need to create it in the main room. And so there is one other thing we're going to do. We need to display score, health, and lives. So we're going to create this SLH score caption. And one really important point here is that by default, lives are not shown, health is not shown. So you've got to go in there and change it from don't show to show, unless you're not going to manage score health and lives. And then you just, whatever you are going to manage, you put in there and you click OK. Now, this controller should go into the main room. So open up the first room. And this is going to be really crucial here. This should always be in the very first room you create. So here's a room I've been working on, and this is actually part of a maze, and I was thinking that I probably should have a splash page at the beginning of the game. So I have two options. I can just delete my objects that are in here or turn this into the splash page, or I can create a separate room at the beginning. And I think that's what I'm eventually going to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that now. I'm going to create a new room, and I'm going to move it to the top. And I'm going to rename it. So you see how I, I, I click it so it's highlighted? You just click it, pause, and it usually does that. And I'm going to put it splash page. You could call it home page or whatever. Okay. If you're going to do a splash page where you put a graphic on it about your game and all that, you really need to have that room. Also, this should be the top room. And... I know what you may be thinking. You might be thinking, well, wait, there's no objects in here. That's okay. What we're going to do is on the splash page, I'm going to add the controller main object. Controller main. I'm going to click in here, and you see there's a little blue sphere with the question mark? That's the actual controller main object. So if you want a sprite to help you understand where that is, you can add one. But... 
My recommendation is you don't and you make sure for sure it's invisible. Notice controller main has no sprite. It just has one event create. Now it's in our room. Let's test it. If you did it right, you won't see anything except for one little feature and that's at the top. You should see score zero, lives three, health 100. However, we're in a splash page and there's nothing to look at here. So that's a problem. So one of the things you're going to need to do is create a graphic for the beginning of your game. And that's okay if we don't have one today. What we could do is we could add another little feature to our controller main. And on create, what we can do is we can go to uh, main one and info. We can drag this here and say something like, um, welcome to my game. Right now I'm keeping it generic. Okay. So watch how that changes things. Don't forget to save your changes. Go ahead and try running it. You should have a little welcome window that pops up. Welcome to my game. So you could put a whole set of instructions and things here. I don't recommend you do it. In fact, I recommend you create a nice graphic for it and then you just pull this out when you're done. But that's a good reminder to you that you still have work to do on the splash page. However, how do we get into our maze and test this out? Well, we're gonna do one more thing and I think this is a really important uh, aspect to add to our controller object. And that is, we're gonna add another event. This time, it's a keyboard event and it's enter. So the keyboard, when we hit enter, let's go to the next room. And that's under main one, excuse me. And whenever you go to another room, to be safe, you should always only go to a room if it exists. So you see this little thing here, it says check next drag it up and it says if the next room exists then go to the next room okay now here's what's cool is we can do a transition we can do a little animation so i'm going to try create from left just to see what that looks like click ok and i'm going to add one more piece to my display message and that is press enter to begin now, I put a little hashtag right in between. That's for a new line. Let's see if that works. So the two things I added to the controller main was displaying the message that says press enter to begin and then the enter keyboard event. If the next room exists, go to the next room. Let's test it. Don't forget to save your changes. Always good to save your changes. We load it up. Our window should pop up. Notice there's a new line. It doesn't show the hashtag because the hashtag was for a new line. I click OK, press Enter. There we go. And it animated out so you can see how that works. And you see it says score zero, lives three. Well, let's collect some coins. And now my score is at three. And you will notice my object isn't in the room, but it's still showing. Well, it is in the room, but I didn't place it in here. And what that means is persistent is working. So it means when I put it in splash page, it will still exist in room zero. I don't have to add it to that other room. It's automatically there because of that little check mark. This is in fact probably the only object I recommend you making persistent. But what's cool about this is you don't ever have to put it in other rooms. It will always be there. So this object will control not only starting the game, but ending the game as well. So hopefully you've got this. And what we want to do is let's talk about the spike, right? What we're going to do is add some spikes in the room for added danger. And then I want to make it so that um, I can eventually die and have the game end because obviously we need to have that available. So I'm going to go into my room, room one, or room zero in this case. I should probably change that. Room one, there we go. Okay, 
And now I'm going to add some spikes, various locations. By the way, if you hold down Alt, you click and you can move it exactly where you want it. I'm just going to put a bunch of these all over the place. Okay, normally I wouldn't do that in a maze. I'm really doing this for testing. So, remember what happened on our spike. This spike, if my hero collides with the spike, I lose 25 health. So, let's test this out. Save my changes, run it. Click OK, press enter, get my three points, collide with an object. I have a health of 75. I now have a health of 50. Now it's 25. Now I have zero health. Now, technically speaking, if I have no health, I should be dead, right? And I shouldn't have any more lives. And now I'm at negative 25 health and negative 50 health and negative 75. So we have a problem here. Two problems. Number one, when I get zero or less health, I don't lose a life. But the other problem is then I keep going down, down, down in my points. So what I want to do now is fix it. So I go back to the controller main, and, and, and this is where I want to do a couple more key features. We have a create event. We have an enter event. Um, we have a couple more events that are really crucial for managing score and lives, and that is under other, and we have no more lives, no more health. So let's deal with no more health. If I don't have any more health, I should lose a life, right? So I drag out lives and I'm gonna put negative one. And I'm gonna check relative so that I don't go from three to negative one, I go from three to two. Relative means we take away. Also, I don't want my health to keep going down from zero. So what I need to do is reset the health. Drag it out, put it at 100. I'm not going to check relative because I want it back at 100. And then if you really want to get fancy, you can make them restart the room. So I'm going to go back here and I want restart the room, which I think is either this one or the next one. Yep, restart the room. I can give it a different animation. And this is part of controller main. Let's test it. My mouse comes back. Save, test. Get my three points. 75, 50, 25. Hit one more spike, I should have two lives. Yep, I got two lives and now I gotta restart my room. I get more points though. And now I'm down to one life. One life to live. And now I have zero lives. Now I have negative one life. So we have one last thing we have to deal with. What happens when there's no more lives? We die. Yeah, exactly. And the game is over, man. All right. So that was no more health. We just add a new event. Other, no more lives. No more lives. The game is essentially over. So now's the time to show the high scores table. If you want to add backgrounds, change borders and things like that, change the font, you're welcome to do it. I'm just going to leave it as default. Game is essentially over. And now I can go, I think it's main two. Yep. And I can either end the game or I can restart the game or I can even ask the user if they want to restart it. So we could just do it as end game, or we can go to control, and we can ask the user a question. Game over. Would you like to play again? And I click OK. Now, it says right here, if the user answers yes to would you like to play again. So in this case, we're going to need to do the restart the game, not end the game. So if they say, yes, we want to restart the game. If they say, no, we want to end the game. So we got to go back to control and drag this else. So this is an if else situation. If you want to make it all pretty, you drag these out here, these little blocks. And now it looks pretty. 
but this is also a way that you can add other features in here. But really, in essence, this is it. So I'm going to leave you with that code right there, and we'll go ahead and test it out to make sure it works. I like living dangerously here. Just go right into all these spikes until I'm dead. And there we go, top 10 players. Me. Would you like to play again? I'm gonna say yes. Welcome to my game. And we're back to the beginning. All right, we gotta test it out, make sure we choose not to play again and make sure the whole thing is over. This time I'm gonna click no, game's over. Save your changes, make sure it works. All right, good luck with your games. At this point, well, you're getting really close to being able to uh, finish off the game with a few more objects and then it's just level design. Stay tuned for more.